Hi guys, uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, this is Marco Serencivia here. You joined the uh, Oracle Machine Learning uh, Office Hours user Trilight. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Oracle Stream Analytics with real-time uh, Oracle Machine Learning Services scoring. So uh, joining us today is Thomas Vengel. He's going to be uh, taking over the presentation and showing you guys a great uh, set of slides and uh, uh, talking about his demo. And uh, joining with me today is also Sherry LaMonica. So if you guys have any questions, remember to use the Q&A uh, panel. And um, uh, that's it with that. I'll uh, take it away, Thomas. Thank you very much for, for doing this for us. Yeah, thank you, Marcus, for the great introduction and having me here. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Wengel. I'm the product manager for Oracle Stream Analytics, also known as uh, Golden Gate Stream Analytics. I'm based out of the Bangalore office in India. And I'll be doing this presentation um, today. And if you have any questions or something is not clear, please feel free to ask uh, questions through Q&A. All right, so let's get started. So in today's session, what I'm going to show is the, um, the first, we'll go through the stream analytics marketplace predictions, customer business use cases, technical use cases, and user personas. Next, we'll go through the product features and differentiating features when compared to other competitors. And as a third part, we'll go through the OML integration. Uh, that's a new feature that we introduced, which includes architecture and usability areas. And as the fourth part, I'll show you a quick demo of how the um, um, integration happens between Stream Analytics and um, OML. Lastly, I'll also take you through a couple of recent customer case studies in the stream data processing uh, use cases. Okay, so real-time data is very important in today's digital world. Real-time data is produced from multiple places and multiple system as customers build and deploy applications in different platforms. This could be running on different clouds, private or public. And today's data analytics industry is going through a vast change with new technology advancements. And in the recent times, there is a lot of IT spending that will be happening in the next few years. So in this Gartner study, top 100 data analytics prediction through 2024, $60 billion will be spent on data integration because of the demand on intercloud and hybrid deployments of data stores. Majority of these new integration would be using AI as a top criteria for simplifying integration, automated insights, and no-code application development. It seems that more than 50% of the new integration technologies will be using AI, more than 65% of new code by 2024 will be low-code application development, and 65% of the business leaders say that um, you know, automated insights from AI operations would be uh, much higher than what it was compared to 3% way back in uh, 2020. Okay, so now let's get into the business use cases of um, stream analytics. So there are two major sets of business use cases in the streaming analytics world. Firstly, um, it is driven by an IT initiative for modernization of their um, data systems. It is marked in the dotted line box on the left top. Here, IT teams would like to modernize their, their newer systems like data warehouse or cloud data lake ingest or create a new rest space or publish subscribe based enterprise data services. There are also use cases of transforming the data in real time, also known as streaming ETL or real time data pipelines. Another initiative can be categorized as data operations or the new term is the AI uh, ops um, and also called as operational insights for real time dashboarding. The other set of business cases are very specific to all the industry verticals. So let's say that most of them are financial services or transportation or telecom, retail, manufacturing, utilities, and healthcare. So if you look at specific use cases in one of these industries, it could be a fraud detection or risk management in financial services, or it can be similar fraud detection and risk management in healthcare or even telecom too. Similarly, monitoring of um, delivery vehicles or optimizing logistical routes in the logistics business or you are looking for outages and real-time telemetry in utilities like electricity, gas supply, et cetera. Now let's look into the uh, technical use case. So when you look at technical use case, um, 
you're, 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 you're looking to source data from various different sources. It could be files, it could be REST endpoints, it could be messaging systems like JMS or Kafka, it could be you know, other uh, tools like Golden Gate, or you could uh, look for data from the database directly. So the, the data sources that are there from the left are basically processed using stream analytics under the various use cases, technical use cases such as even correlation or anomaly detection, or window compaction, or you know, spatial data processing, which is basically the geospatial, geographical boundary analysis, or the old and old school of complex business rules, where you have a lot of business rules that are, are defined, or the new age um, operations called as the AI ops, which um, there's a lot of forecasting, even scoring or predictive analytics, and dashboarding um, uh, if you want to create some real time dashboards. Now let's look at. <clears throat> who are the various um, different users here. So in the past, most of the um, uh, users for the stream analytics have been uh, data analysts. Uh, but however, we are seeing two new sets of users coming into the picture. They are the database administrators and also the data engineers. So data analyst um, in the past was basically looking at most of the data contents and preparing some machine learning models or some statistical models in the past creating dashboards and visualization or creating um, you know, rules and business um, uh, rules or, or any of those kind of use cases. Um, but uh, today what we are seeing is you know, the database administrator who manages the data and the security and the users, um, all of that are now responsible for the data in an enterprise. And they are also the ones now using tools like OML, um, um, you know, provisioning uh, OML services on the you know, database and administrative services. And on the other side, what we see is the data engineers who are the new age ETL developers, or you can also call them as the big data developers, Hadoop developers, um, who creates a lot of um, um, systems for complex windowing correlations, or they're trying to run the big data systems and messaging environments, or they're trying to do some, um, you know, creating pipelines um, in, the, in, in the ETL world. So let's see how, what are the process, uh, high level process of how you create a real time data pipeline. So when you are creating a new data pipeline, there are three main stages. And these three main stages can be considered into five sub stages. The first stage is data ingestion, where you bring in the data from various different sources like sensor data or social media data or clickstream data, um, or even uh, database change data capture um, data as well. So all these data, when they come into the system, they are not good for um, you know, processing into their algorithms or uh, models. So you need to actually do some pre-processing. Though the pre-processing can be considered as a you know, transformation uh, that you do on an ETL uh, tool, which could be filter or aggregate transformation or doing some correlation uh, lookup and many such things. Uh, once that data is ready for processing, um, they can be sent through the next stage which is the, um, you know, the analysis or prediction stage where you run um, the data patterns or window patterns or machine learning models here. Once the data is processed, the next stage is basically going to uh, you know, review or analyze that in the um, conditions of the business rules, um, or we call it as a decision stage where your business rules, policies, and logics are applied. And based on that, um, you know, the data is taken to the next stage which is the final stage called as action. So the data can be published into an external pipeline or external tool, or you can invoke an application or executed in a tool. Uh, you can visualize, uh, do some you know, real-time visualization, or you would like to persist the data in a data warehouse or data lake, you could do that. So now let's move on to the product features and differentiators. So, there are some interesting features that um, um, there for uh, Golden Gate Stream Analytics. So the the first one, um, you know, the tool can be used with by uh, used by a business analyst or data analyst, which has a simple UI to create data pipeline in in few minutes. It actually hides all the complexities of distributed computing infrastructure like Hadoop or Spark, Kian, Kafka. Everything is hidden um, underneath in the application, so it is much simpler for an end user to use it. It supports custom programming like Java. So if you have a custom program that you could you know, import into the tool, or you can also run something called as CQL, which is continuous query language that is um, built into the tool, which is more like a uh, SQL. 
it has a set of good set of connectors to source data from relational databases or NoSQL databases and deliver to big data or even to cloud ecosystems like AWS or OCI or Azure uh, systems. It has capability for deploying it anywhere. That means you can design it on-prem and run it on the cloud, or you can design it on the cloud and run it on-prem, or you can design some part in um, you know, cloud or any of those kind of hybrid manner. So you could run, run part of it in cloud, part of it in um, on-prem as well. So it has a capability, um, you know, to create, um, you know, machine learning model. So you can uh, create your machine learning model um, as a custom application, and um, whether it is a static or dynamic model um, like an OML. So you you can import into the tool, or you can make the uh, tool to uh, run it externally in a twenty four by seven mode. You have simple, um, you know, tools to create charts and dynamic dashboards from a pipeline. And also we have some starter kit, which is um, uh, ready to use patterns and also half a dozen uh, demo pipelines, uh, which are available for, um, you know, geospatial processing and ML stages. So what are the core uh, differentiators of this product? Uh, there are six core differentiators of Stream Analytics product. First one is that it is a simple browser-based uh, interactive UI for designing of pipelines by data analysts and business analysts. Second one is that it has direct integration with um, Oracle Golden Gate to provide CDC data from relational da databases and NoSQL databases. Third is that it has a rich set of streaming patterns which are protected by um, you know, Oracle patterns, over 70 patterns um, to be almost precise. Um, fourth is that the integration with various maps like Open Maps, Google Maps, Custom Tiles is for geospatial analytics. Fifth is that um, it is built on the latest open source technologies, um, which are for the distributed computing architecture. It is using Apache Ignite as an in-memory data caching um, system. And for lookups, Apache Kafka as the data streaming platform. And it is built on the distributing computing architecture with Spark Streaming Execution Engine. Six, and, um, and the last, but not the least, it has a capability to use machine learning models in the streaming pipeline to do scoring and uh, doing predictive analytics. So here is a quick snapshot of, um, of all the features that we just talked about. On the leftmost, you can see the interactive low code designer and um, uh, left bottom, you see the patterns and accelerators that are ready to use. And on the um, right bottom that you see the predictive analytics and machine learning model and it's, it's and then the center bottom that you see is the geospatial analytics and geofencing uh, capability, how you can draw it on the map. So it's, it's a low code tool, um, which can be used by data analytics, uh, data analyst directly to build and embed real time dashboards that are event driven. And these are not SQL dashboards, right? So that needs to be refreshed or dashboards that can run continuously and have all the events pushed to them in real time. So there is a lot of things that are going on in this chart now but um, it's just included to give you a flavor of what is um, there in the graphical language of this tool. So a quick uh, snapshot on, you know, what are the sources and targets um, that are supported by uh, Stream Analytics? You can bring in any Golden Gate uh, extract or any Golden Gate sources that supports um, uh, the various different database sources, um, um, which includes um, uh, relational as well as non-relational or you can source data from Kafka systems, um, you know, the data that is brought in from IoT systems, or you can also bring in data from uh, legacy applications through JMS. And um, also you have, um, you know, lookups and other integration with Kafka, Oracle database, MySQL database, Apache Ignite, REST, um, you know, ADW and ATP, um, OCI streaming service, Azure even Hub, AWS Managed Kafka, all of them are, can be considered as sources. And on the um, sources as well as targets. And on the target side, uh, we support a lot of big data systems from the on-prem Hadoop or um, HDFS, Apache HBase, Hive, um, MongoDB, Elasticsearch. Um, and on the cloud side, we support OCI Object Store, OCI Big Data, Azure Data Lake, and the AWS S3. And quickly, um, you know, somebody that Golden Gate Stream Analytics is um, today available on OCI Marketplace. Um, it is available um, 
for less than a dollar per hour per OCPU uh, today. So it is easy to provision. Um, you can provision it in under less than five minutes. And if you'd like to see the uh, product in use, or if you'd like to try the product, uh, we have a free trial that is available on the live labs. And um, for getting the live labs, you can actually search uh, on the Google for Golden Gate Stream Analytics Live Labs, and this will be the first link that um, you'll get in. Okay, so now let's um, get specific into the Oracle machine learning integration. So there's a new feature that comes out as a part of the 19.1.0.0.6 version. And um, just wanted to give a quick recap on the OML services architecture. So Oracle machine learning service is not in the autonomous database, provides access into database machine learning features. So OML service basically ex extends your OML functionality to support the OML model deployment and model lifecycle management in both in database OML models through REST APIs. So the REST API of the Oracle machine learning service provides REST API endpoints hosted on Oracle Autonomous DB. So these endpoints enable you to store machine learning models along with its metadata creating scoring endpoints for the model. And the OML uh, services users are basically created on the ATP and ADWC or ADWC. Now let's look at um, the Oracle Stream Analytics to Oracle Machine Learning Dynamic Integration Architecture. So here um, you can see that the first uh, stages you load the data into the um, historical data. In, uh, historic, you load the first uh, training set of data into the autonomous transaction processing or ADW system. Now you prepare the data set using feature engineering methods that can be used for building machine learning models. Once you create the machine learning models you uh, using OML, now you deploy that model into OML services. Once you deploy the model into OML services, uh, you can create a pipeline in the Oracle Stream Analytics with um, your various data sources and pre-processing stages. And then you create a stage called as machine learning OML scoring stage. And that stage uh, basically have an integration into the OML services and uh, using the REST end endpoints. So when the streaming data flows through the OSA pipeline, the OSA would access this machine learning model through the service oriented interface with the streaming data that needs to be scored and it responds back the, or the service call would return an ML scoring results and it would be used for the next stages of the data pipeline on what decisions that needs to be taken or you know how the data should be sent to the next um, phase. So this is a block diagram. So now let's get into the, um, actually the cloud architecture and topology. So you have various sources that are coming in. Um, and before that, uh, first the data scientist would analyze the data, then you know prepare the data on the autonomous database and um, they would deploy it on the OML services. So you can see that the data scientist would first prepare the data model on the autonomous database and then provision it on the um, OML services. It could be on a separate subnet or it could be on a separate region as well. And um, Oracle Stream Analytics, it is running on um, in a separate subnet or separate um, instance on the OCI. Uh, here, uh, data engineers would develop a pipeline and this pipeline would have various different sources that are coming in. And this would um, you know interact with the real time I interact with the machine learning model um, in real time and this result is basically processed and next stages and then it would be sent in to various different targets like um, real time messaging systems or big data lakes or business process applications or alerted notification like an OCI notification service or um, you know data science and data marts um, as well. So now let's quickly look at the OML um, OSA UI patterns on the OML. So there are two options. The first one is you can create a new pattern using the OML service that is a ready to use pattern. And the option two is uh, once you're in the pipeline editor, you can create a machine learning uh, stage in that um, option. And the OSA UI, it is pretty simple. There's all what you need, all these basic configuration parameters like an um, OML service server URL, tenant name, service name, username, password, model, and the input fields that you would like to provision. And if you're looking at um, OSA UI for uh, ML integration, then you have an option to score it in as an individual event or as a batch event um, you know, to process. So now let's um, get, um, so this is how the final uh, look like, how the UI looks like, how the scoring results would um, show up in the uh, pipeline. So now let's look into the demo. So here I'm logging into the um, Oracle Golden Gate Stream Analytics UI. 
And uh, here, um, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use an OML model that is prepared by uh, Marcos. And I'm going to use the GLM model that is available here. And um, in Oracle Stream Analytics once, I log into that. Uh, so before that, I just want to show that, you know, the model is deployed into the OML services. And, um, you know, I've um, made a query in, I've imported the, the token and made a query to see, um, you know, uh, what are the uh, services that are deployed uh, or what are the models that are deployed on the OML services. So I can see that, you know, my uh, GLM class model is deployed in the um, in the OML services, and I'm going to use um, this directly uh, in the tool. So here is a home page of Oracle Stream Analytics, and uh, it's talking about you know six ready to use tools or demos um, or you know training um, your, uh, pipelines are available here. Uh, some of them have uh, machine learning models that are inbuilt. So this uh, this one has a machine learning model um, inbuilt. So um, I was talking about how the system settings are done. The system settings basically talk about where you provision your Kafka. It could be on-prem or it could be on the cloud. You could run your Spark on the uh, cloud or on-prem. Um, similarly, um, you can you know, run your runtime can be a Spark standalone or a YAN uh, model as well. And you can sp specify these pipelines. You can have you know, any number of uh, executor accounts, either as a system setting or at, at a runtime setting. So you can, based on the volume of data, you can scale your systems with your Spark nodes and big data or Hadoop nodes for the higher number of execution. And a lot of other user management and many of the other uh, configurations are available. So now looking at the catalog. So here is a catalog. So the catalog um, uh, places, catalog is where you actually create a new pipeline or new, first you create a new connection. Um, you know, it could be file connection or it could be, um, you know, a, um, you know, Kafka connection or any of those connection. And then um, you can create a stream connection from um, any of the other uh, data sources. And then you could create a pipeline and any of the other uh, uh, models that you're creating here, right? And the systems as targets or uh, other models. So um, here in the um, catalog, um, we have all the artifacts that are listed uh, here, or what all the all the resources, and uh, all the resources can be tagged in specific um, tag name, and um, they are filtered with the different types. So you can, um, you know, look at the specific um, uh, models here, the streams or pipelines. Um, all of them can be looked up. So, so I'm going to see all of them, and I'm going to filter with um, you know my name as tag. So I've deployed a first. I've deployed a pipeline. So before that, I'll just show you how I create a stream on the source. So there's a file stream, and this stream um, has um, you know data that is coming from the Iris dataset. That's what it's the model is built on. Uh, the GLM model is built on, and I'm sending the event by four, um, and the data sources are sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width and also species, which is coming as text data. So this data is now pumped into my uh, pipeline. So let me open my pipeline and it'll open up the pipeline editor. So you can see that, uh, you know, the data is coming um, from the input source in real time. And uh, the sepal width, everything is coming in, um, in real time. Now this is coming passed into the next stage or um, you know i can um, the next stage which is the machine learning stage um, and here um, there's a published pipeline so i will not be able to edit any of these so i give you your ml server url tenant name and um, uh, ml service username password and the data is input field is sepal length and sepal width and and the scoring would happen um, based on the input that is configured and I can also create, uh, you know, visualizations here. So I can create a pie chart, or I can create a bubble chart. I can create a stack bar chart. All of these various different charts can be created, or a, you know, there are many more charts that are available uh, to be used. And once you create these um, uh, visualization, you can actually display it as a dashboard. Also, you can create it as a dashboard and publish it to uh, an end user to see real time, uh, you know, data getting populated. So all of these data would be getting populated in real time. So you can see based on the data flow here, 
um, you know, the data would be updated or the dashboard would be updated in real time. So, um, so that's the quick um, um, areas. And I just wanted to show you that the various different patterns that are available, um, you know, a lot of ready to use patterns that are available here today. And this is the new feature that we have for machine learning. And um, this is a machine learning new feature that we have um, uh, built in as a part of the 191006 uh, version. So uh, quickly going in, um, for the last as a customer reference. So being fortunate to have a very good uh, customer reference uh, that came up in the last week, or sorry, this week, um, and um, been happy to share that. CLGP has actually adopted um, Oracle Streaming Analytics as the, as the tool for the real-time data processing. So CLGP is a sailing premier league and have expanded their successful data analytics platform using Oracle technologies. So they, um, they're they using, they're going to use this from the April 21st um, or 21, 2021 season to provide real-time race metrics. So they use sophisticated correlation patterns, data enrichment and machine learning. Oracle Stream Analytics makes the autonomous decision based on the 30,000 data points for an F20, F50 catamaran, um, you know, which sends data on every second, um, um, on, on, on an, uh, for every second. So in the past, they were actually running 10 streams, but now they have with the Oracle Stream Analytics, they've made it as a single stream to um, uh, make it work. And uh, a quick um, architecture of their deployment. So they have data that is coming from race helicopter telemetry, support board telemetry, and race board telemetry. Um, they all go through um, the um, racing venue at JIT. Uh, using um, uh, and the, the tools basically process that first stage data and send it into OCI Cloud, which is going through an OCI streaming and Golden Gate Stream Analytics. And they're also going to look for um, adopting autonomous DB and OML with um, you know, the notebooks uh, before they publish the, the, the application tools into the other um, targets. Similarly, we have um, a new use scenario um, or a new use case where um, edge computing can be done with Oracle Stream Analytics um, using the Oracle Rowing Edge uh, appliance. And um, here also the architecture looks pretty simple, um, or sorry, pretty similar. And um, here the difference is that they are also using something called as you know GPU-based MZ2 uh, machine learning algorithms in the in one of the stages for you know quick um, integration. So here you have the edge device, and then once the data is processed, they will send it into the OCI um, cloud as um, you know, semi-connected or disconnected um, integration. Okay, so looking at the time, uh, we are at the end of the hour. So we have, um, uh, I have some you know follow-up um, um, data that you can look up. So we have some blogs on data fabric strategy. Oracle has been ranked as number one um, by uh, Forrester on that. We have an Oracle Golden Gate YouTube channel um, for on the data mesh and the strategy and the architecture patterns. We also have the free live labs and the cloud marketplace uh, integration. Okay, so um, that brings us to the end of the session and um, I can spend a few minutes if you have any questions. Um, um, Thank you very much. Yeah, that was an excellent uh, session. Thanks a lot, uh, Thomas. And there's actually been a, a lot of great questions. So if we go to the Q and A, we can start by a question that was asked by uh, two people, I think. So in terms of what's the difference between the stream analytics and the OCI streaming? Okay, yeah, so um, you know both are different. OCI, OCI streaming is just a you know, messaging infrastructure. Um, you can say it as you know, something similar to Kafka on the cloud or uh, the event hub on the Azure or Amazon um, Kinesis. And the stream analytics is, is more like the Kinesis, Kinesis analytics or um, you know, equivalent to a Microsoft Stream Analytics or Azure Stream Analytics. So they are um, totally different. So one is just you know, shipping the data from one place to the other, yeah, and Stream Analytics is actually doing the data processing, um, including machine learning analytics. And the next question, most people are interested in running OSA on OCI through the paid marketplace image. Could you please elaborate on how this deployment option applies to content being presented? Um, can one set up a distributed OSA cluster using marketplace image 
So today we don't have a cluster option, but we have um, options of specific special images. So uh, Oracle Stream Analytics runs in two stages. One is a deployment, uh, one is a design mode and a runtime mode. So the runtime mode is where you would run uh, clusters of um, you know, uh, infrastructure. So you can have your own uh, Hadoop infrastructure or um, you know, an Oracle BDS kind of equivalent service where you can run it as, um, um, run it as a cluster. And um, OCI itself is a high available uh, system. So you, it is used for mostly uh, design purpose. So even if um, you want to provision another instance, um, you can have that as a backup option uh, separately. And, um, okay. and OCI yeah, then, <clears throat> so the, the machine learning models, right, deploy in Onyx format. So OML services, uh, the model you were using is an in database model, right? It's a serialized model mm -hmm. version. But with the same kind of call, you could easily call our Onyx format because because you're it's just a different REST endpoint. Um, so that will be the same uh, the same process. The only difference, uh, and and actually, is a question to you, Thomas, because the when the model is a, a machine learning uh, in database algorithm, we know that the 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 time right that it takes for scoring is usually between you know maybe eighty milliseconds, one hundred milliseconds, depending on the data center you're working with. If the model is a, of a type Onyx, it might take a little more time. So I've seen everywhere from 400 milliseconds and, and depending of the complexity, of course, of the Onyx model, it potentially could even go up to a second. So I think that's still not gonna be a problem for you, right? And the tool accounts for that uh, delay or difference anyway, right? Yeah, so so that's something that we can actually work on. So we are looking to include the Onyx model as a um, you know, as a pipeline, as a as a stage to be in, imported into the pipeline itself. That means you can bring the Onyx model directly into OSA. Oh, um, okay, I see. If you want to do that, that's not there today. But today we support only PMML, but mm -hmm. we are looking for Onyx as well. So, so if there is a performance improvement um, that you would need, you can deploy directly those Onyx model. Um, you know, in the in the in the near future when the feature is available. Oh, okay. That, 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 that'll be, uh, I think, a good idea. All right. How does model training happen in such case? My understanding, yes, model training will be done in ADW. So OSA will not be doing any model training. Model training always happens outside of OSA. So it can happen on OML or if, if you are a um, customer who is using um, Python and outside notebook, you could use that as well. So all of that is um, possible. So is OSA on drawing edge available to commercial customers? Uh, yes, I think you can work with um, those teams to um, you know make it available. It's available as a special image where um, you can get OSA um, along with it. So can um, Stream Analytics consume graph data types? No, we don't support graph data types at this point of time. Does OSA require ADB as a dependency? Um, so if you're using OML integration, then uh, you need ADB as a dependency, right? So if you are using OML services, OML services is run as a part of uh, ADB. So you need um, ADB access or the username and password and all that details. And you also need to publish that model in the OML services. So, um, and the user provisioning happens on ADB, right? Um, so you, that's, that's a dependency if you are using OML integration. Can I always say output be visualized to Looker or Tableau? So we don't, I mean, you can direct it as a uh, stream to as a REST endpoint or Kafka, and then you can consume it from Tableau. We don't support directly Tableau um, as, a, as a target. So you need to um, you know, transform the data in the Tableau format for uh, consuming it and um, have the integration with it. All right. So, um, Thank you for having me here. I hope uh, the session was interesting and useful. And um, yeah, thanks, uh, Marcus, for hosting me here as well. Sure. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, remember, you can always also ask your questions in Ask Tom. Um, I really appreciate you guys being here and uh, talk to you next week. Thank you very much, Thomas, again. Excellent. And thank you, Shari, for, for supporting. <laughs>